Hello, Rick here with a spoiler warning for the entire Mass Effect universe ahead, so... Liara Tassoni is one of the many poster characters of the Mass Effect series and one of the few characters that canonically survives the entire run. Unless you run the ending of Mass Effect 3 with a poor ready rating, in which case everyone is fair game to die. She survives the ending of Mass Effect 1, is absent for the suicide mission in Mass Effect 2, and rejoins the party for the finale of the trilogy, so her cropping up in the trailer for the untitled continuation of the series is not too surprising, although after the absence of familiar faces in favour of these tired ones in Andromeda, it was heartwarming to see her appear again, even a little older than we last saw her. This video aims to map out her life across her 109 years as depicted in the games and spin-off narratives in the comics and a brief cartoon appearance. Liara was born to matriarchs Benezia and Atheta. Atheta can be found tending bars and dispensing wisdom around the galaxy as she was effectively shunned from Thessia because of her controversial opinions on the roles that Asari should take in the galactic scene. She wished for them to take a more active role in affairs, and even attempt to create mass relay technology. She even wished that young Asari, those in their maiden stage, would contribute more to society than pursue their curiosity. Possibly in part to her beliefs, her and Benezia's relationship did not last. Theta even lost track of their pure-blood daughter, Liara, who was born in 2077. We don't know exactly when Theta left, but Liara has no memory of her father. Benezia, in the meantime, was left to raise Liara, but as a prominent figure in Asari culture, their relationship was strained at times. Because of Benezia's importance, there was much expected of Liara, who had the added stigma of being a pure-blood Asari, one born of two Asari, something considered rather unbefitting of such a prestigious matriarch. Eventually, Liara grew fascinated with archaeology and the long-lost Prothean Empire, the precursor civilization to most species of the galaxy. As was common knowledge, the galaxy-spanning empire had vanished 50,000 years ago, but supposedly left behind the faster-than-light travel and all the building blocks for a new interstellar power. Such a mystery was naturally enticing to the young Asari, who began to study them in order to shy away from any philosopher or political role that was expected of her, even talking Dr. Passante to letting her into the Asari Prothean archives on Thessia once or twice. She also visited Palavan for a time, and in 2182 she was contacted by Alec Ryder of the Andromeda Initiative regarding her field of study. Her choice of personal curiosity over expectation led Liara and Benezia to drift apart somewhat, and by the time Liara was 106, she hadn't even spoken to her mother for two years. In these two years, however, Benezia was indoctrinated by the Reaper Sovereign, and fell, alongside the Spectre Saren, into acting on its will. She had originally intended to talk down the Spectre and change his ways, only to fall victim to the ancient Reaper's corruption herself. One of her actions is to fund Binary Helix, a suspected wing of Cerberus, in the creation of Rachni clones for Saren's forces. Eventually, Liara had pursued leads into unravelling the Prothean mystery to the planet Therum in the Gnosis system in the Artemis Tau sector block. The second planet in the system held ruins of interest for the archaeologist, and it is here that she is first encountered by the party, unaware of her mother's involvement with the rogue Spectre agent. Alongside the Normandy crew looking for her, Saren had dispatched a team of Geth to recover the Prothean expert, probably based on Benezia's information and recommendations. Well, expert by human standards, at 106 she was still considered a young, I don't know, 20-something by older Asari? Nevertheless, Liara allies with the party in order to confront her mother, although it's down to the player to decide if Liara is present for meeting Benezia. Either way, the matriarch is eventually killed on Novaria in the same labs she helped create. Liara continues to accompany Shepard and the Normandy crew in their missions to prevent the Reaper invasion from beginning in 2183, and, importantly for her, uncovering the truth behind the disappearance of the Protheans that they too fell to the Reaper's cycle of harvesting 50,000 years ago. She aids in deciphering the information left by the Prothean beacons and other sources to locate the conduit to the Reaper's main mass relay on Ilos. 
the site of a large Prothean ruin. Upon postponing the Reaper invasion by defeating Sovereign, Liara continues to travel with Shepard and crew while they were assigned to investigate vanishing human colonies, and was therefore present for the destruction of the SSV Normandy SR-1 and the death of Commander Shepard. Two months after this, she embarks on a personal mission to recover Shepard's remains from the crash site on Alchera, which brings her into contact with Cerberus agents who are also looking for the hero's remains for their own purpose, Project Lazarus. Miranda Lawson tells Liara that they may be able to bring her friend back if she assists, but also learns that the Collectors are hiring mercenary groups to also retrieve the corpse of the Commander. She teams up with Ferran, an agent of the mysterious Shadow Broker, in order to help track down Shepard. Well, Ferran's actually a triple agent, but that's complicating matters even more. This entire string of misses, failures, backstabbings and shady deals wears heavily on Liara and erodes both her patience and to an extent her merciful compassion. In 2184 the Lazarus Project is completed and Shepard is revived from the dead. Liara in the meantime has taken up office on Ilium and is dealing in her own information trade, channeling her mother's harsh streak and her darker learned aspects from her months chasing Shepard's corpse. One of her goals is to exact revenge on the Shadow Broker, but she also provides aid to Tria Nuwaini in her own Prothean research. This darker path is alleviated somewhat by both the return of Shepard and the reveal that Ferran is still alive. Shepard agrees to help Liara, not to mention technically Shepard owes Ferran a debt, and teams up with Liara to rescue him. When they finally track down the Shadow Broker's vessel at Hagalaz, a battle ensues where the team take over his base and kill the Yarg. The identity of the Shadow Broker was such a secret, even from his own operatives, that Liara is able to simply adopt the role in place of the former Broker, much as this Yarg had done, and run the information network herself. In one momentary press of a button, Liara Tassoni had become one of the most influential people in the galaxy. From these resources, she was able to vastly improve the galaxy's odds at combating the upcoming Reaper invasion. Admiral Hackett of the Human Systems Alliance, a longtime supporter of Shepard, works with her to find something to combat the Reapers. She begins her search on Thessia, meeting up again with Pisanti but soon her search for something to fight the Reapers with took her to the Hanar world of Karje. During an exploration of their Prothean archive, she is attacked by a Cerberus Phantom and comes into contact with the elusive man's hologram communications again. Despite his offerings of partnership and their working together in the past, she is rightly suspicious of his activities and denies any further amiable contact between Cerberus and the Shadow Brokers network. In the end, this is the right move, because Cerberus has been corrupted by Reaper indoctrination at the highest levels through their pursuit of Reaper tech. Her findings on Kaje mention the Mars Archive as a repository for information on an anti-Reaper weapon, the Crucible, so her next destination is set. Arriving at Mars, she helps the teams here uncover the schematics for the device as the Reaper invasion begins in 2186. Shepard and team, currently evacuating Earth as it fell, stop off at Mars Archive to find Cerberus violently pursuing Liara and recruit the Asari once again. She sets up her mobile Shadow Broker base on the Normandy SR2 and travels with Shepard throughout the events of Mass Effect 3 to combat the Reaper invasion. If the group uncover the Prothean Javik, Liara spends a great deal of time questioning him about Prothean culture based on her childhood notions of the species. However, Javik's view of his people is very militant, imperialistic and forged in a time of constant turmoil against their own Reaper invasion. This clashes with the research she had previously compiled and initially leads her to shun and rebuke him before eventually coming to an understanding. Her early conversations with him are some of the few times that we witness the return of the more optimistic mindset of the pre-Broker Liara. On a personal note, Matriarch Theta moved from Ilum to the Citadel to keep an eye on Liara, who she knows is her daughter. 
Likewise, by using her information network, Liara had uncovered who her father was, and the two can reconcile somewhat in the face of the looming threat. Liara also sends a message to Alec Ryder, knowing that the Andromeda Initiative arcs have already launched, explaining the arrival of the Reapers and the state of the Milky Way to the team. As the Crucible is completed, Liara creates a beacon of her own inspired by the Protheans to record the struggles of the galaxy, just in case they all fail to stop the Reapers. She is shocked by the reveal that the Asari government knew more about the Protheans than they let on, a secret that Benezia knew but Liara did not, even with her network. When the final confrontation takes place in London, she offers an Asari gift of swapping some memories before the final battle to Shepard. As for what happens post-ending, well, we'll have to see what ending Bioware makes canon or if they have a system for all three main ones. It seems probably, however, that Shepard dies in the halting of the Reapers, and if not, well, they'd be long dead by the time of the new game, which appears to have a noticeably older Liara. So, that covers the timeline of Dr. Liara Tassoni, archaeologist, shadow broker, and often one of Shepard's best friends. She begins the series as very naive and optimistic, and while she may lose the naivety, the optimism is arguably still there, just tampered by realism. She doesn't give up searching for a way to stop the Reaper invasion, but she also creates backup plans in case they fail. One trait that is maintained, however, despite it being threatened during her time on Ilum, is her compassion. She feels for the commander's experiences, romance optional no, and even spares a thought for Saren, who was indoctrinated. However, she didn't let her compassion cloud her judgement, and could pull out a ruthless streak. She was seen to hold a grudge against the Shadow Broker, and her immersion in the deceitful lifestyle threatened to erode that compassion, but instead she utilised her network and was guided by her morality. Rejecting the more nefarious Cerberus in the end, she became an important asset in the fight against the Reapers, and contributed majorly in their defeat. So, where does she head now? Well. She has extensive experience with the Protheans, Reapers, and many other cultures' technology, a front row seat to the galaxy's most changing events, and for a time, at least, access to the Milky Way's largest information network. So she's a veritable encyclopedia of historical events and ultimately a force for good, despite her willingness to delve into the shadows to accomplish this. She also kept in touch with the Andromeda Initiative, so she is the strongest link between the Andromeda games and the original trilogy. Thanks for watching this video on the life of Liara Tassoni, and I hope you found something enlightening. Not everyone has the comics or played all the DLC. Of course, exactly how her narrative unfolds is partially down to the player, so your depiction of Liara might differ somewhat from Shepard's influence and the order you do things. But that's also why I enjoyed Mass Effect so much. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again for another sci-fi video. Probably a Trek one, but with more Mass Effect on the horizon, I'll be open to tackling the topic again. I've been Rick. Goodbye.